Okay, Mark here with the Hawk, and um, I'm working on electrical work. So, um, if you remember the uh, first part of the series on cleaning up the electrical system, I was questioning uh, what I was going to do in terms of uh, taking some 12 volt DC power off the motor, even though I don't have a starter. Um, I ended up going with this guy right here um, on the recommendation of some folks the Key West um, regulator, and it puts out a uh, very constant 13.8 uh, volts. Uh, and it's got uh, a lot of fans out there. Uh, Leaf sells it, and uh, I actually got this one through Aircraft Spruce, uh, through my employee discount um, with Sonics. So uh, it was, at the end of the day, I probably would have been a little cheaper with Leaf. Uh, sorry, Aircraft Spruce, uh, but anyway. Um, so I've got that, and uh, I've been doing some wiring. I've got the uh, b light um, probe there. Uh, I still have yet to wire power in it. You can still still see it's still got the um, the uh, nine volt battery uh, piece on it. I just attached it to the front of the fuel tank um, box there um, because the lead to get to the probe on the tank is only so long and I'm actually going to have it, put this down, um, I'm going to have it right about there basically uh, is where I put the probe and actually hopefully I've got enough cord, it might be a little tight so hopefully I don't have to move this but I might have to. Um, and I've got of course the panel and um, I repainted my panel um, and put a new hole in for the LED B light instrument, which we have right there. Um, the finish on the panel came out really neat. I actually only had a can of, of uh, gloss black in the car, and I was thinking, oh gosh, I don't want it gloss. But I was in a hurry, of course, and uh, it was only about 40 degrees in the hangar here. And uh, after the first coat, I waited about 20 minutes, went to put the second coat on, and it was so cold, and it just kind of spit paint out and gave me this beautiful um, kind of hammer finish. I couldn't be happier with it. Uh, definitely a happy accident. Um, but I've got um, lines coming out for, um, for that unit. I've got power, ground, and signal, which is the yellow wire. I also have the MGL ASX2 um, that I was wiring up the DB9 connector for in my last video, and I've got power and ground coming out here. So uh, I'm gonna get to work on that. Now what I did do is I'm not going directly from the Key West regulator to those accessories. Um, I did end up getting a battery, and because I'm not, again, not running a starter, I went with a small four cell lithium battery from anti-gravity batteries. And boy, is this thing cool. It's their 401. And look at the size of that thing. It is tiny. Um, it weighs about as much as the regulator. So uh, we're adding a very little weight to the airplane for uh, what I feel is a big benefit of being able to have a little bit of electrical power um, to, you know, have my instrument run when the engine's not necessarily running. Um, this will also just help condition and clean the voltage or just make sure it stays more steady. Um, and then I've got some USB charging. I think I'm going to put the little USB charger um, piece that I have um, there. I have to check out make sure it doesn't interfere with my legs too bad. Uh, that has a digital voltage uh, meter on it. So that'll be nice. I can tell what the voltage is uh, on the system. And uh, so I'm going to turn off the camera and keep whittling away at the wiring work. Um, oh, uh, I was uh, talking about the battery. I, I did make a little battery box. And um, here's the, one of the pieces for it. I'll just show you here real quick. Put that down anywhere. Okay. So I've got a piece here. I made this hinged piece and it's gonna go like so. And uh, basically I just got some um, some eights 
um, some screws there, some 832s, and uh, that's going to be how I remove the battery, is just to remove those screws, and I can flip this down and pull the battery out. So that's all going to go um, back here on the, uh, I don't know what to call it, firewall, I guess, not really. <laughs> um, I guess I'll call it the firewall. I gotta get rid of this tape, this drives me crazy. It looks like, looks like crap. I've actually got some proper clamps. Um, this is the, uh, what is this? This is the, uh, the enrichener cable. And then uh, the battery will sit like that. And uh, I've got a couple of uh, terminals uh, blocks, um, some five terminal blocks. So I'll have uh, one terminal each for power in, ground in. Um, I've got one terminal each for power and ground, and, uh, and then each accessory will come off of those terminal blocks going to uh, common ground on the engine. If I can get my finger out of the way, um, not a good place to show you. There, you can kind of see right there some other ground wires in that stud of the engine. And that'll be my common ground, and then I'll go to a terminal block for all the accessories to get ground from. All right, so I've got my clamps in there on the cable. Looking much nicer. Got all the tape gunk off, and I've got my little battery box in there. So uh, put my battery in, fits like a glove, and I can flip that closed. Uh, and I've got a couple of 832 by one quarter inch uh, bolts or screws that'll go there. And uh, they'll get a nut on the back. Um, now I've got lock nuts for the back, just like I have here for the regulator. And of course, all nuts on the back side of the firewall here are going to get some torque seal uh, for an easy, quick pre-flight and making sure that no bolts or no nuts uh, go through the prop on a push airplane. All right, there's our finished battery installation um, with the screws in there, and uh, it's real solid. Not going anywhere. And uh, between the battery and the regulator, we added, I don't know, two pounds. Um, I'll take it. I think it's worth it. Um, so uh, this airplane has got no problem with the 40 horse 447 in terms of takeoff and climb power on a hot day. And uh, this is a little little sacrifice in weight that's uh, I'm, something I'm really gonna enjoy, uh, the benefits of it. Uh, now, I will tell you, this battery box probably looks real nice in video, but uh, from some angles, um, especially if I was to shoot it straight on, you'll see there's some crooked stuff. I built it late at night in my basement, finished it off during my lunch hour at work. Um, it's probably about the ugliest thing I've built in a long time, but uh, um, hey, it works. <laughs> so uh, it'll, it'll work, it's good. Hey everybody, Mark here with The Hawk, and uh, I've just finished all the wiring. Uh, so I'm gonna show you here my little wiring diagram. Um, pretty simple system, uh, although it's always good that you diagram it out. So. Uh, here's what we got. We've got the AC coming in from the engine. Uh, we're wired in parallel to the strobes. Um, they are Kunzelman uh, Magnum strobes, so they should be wired in parallel according to the instructions on the uh, regulator rectifier and, um, and the strobes as well. So then I've got the reg, reg rec. I've got a 10 amp fuse to the positive post of the battery. Um, the negative terminal of the battery goes um, actually to uh, common ground. Uh, that line right there is, uh, shouldn't be there. Um, and the reg rec goes to common ground. So they are all technically connected. So I guess that's kind of correct. Common ground is on the engine. I've got it going to a uh, terminal block, a uh, five position terminal block. I've got four shown here, but the the in there on the left is the fifth position. Um, and then ground going all to my devices. 
On the positive side, um, I've got 16 gauge wire going to a switch and then to a five position terminal block. Um, so here's what I have here for devices. Um, I've got uh, a USB aux, which I actually don't have wired in yet. Uh, I have to make a bracket for it. Uh, then I have my MGL um, ASX2 and um, a one amp slow blow fuse is called for for that. And then I've got my fuel sender with a regular one amp fuse and my fuel gauge, uh, both from uh, B-Lite or Radiant Instruments, uh, both with uh, regular one amp fuses. And that's it. So uh, let me show you here. Um, I'll walk around to this side. And I did show you before uh, the battery, the rectifier. So now it's all in there uh, with my battery box. You can see my 10 amp fuse, um, my uh, coming off the positive uh, post of the battery to the rectifier. Um, and that just helps prevent the battery from overcharging. Uh, it is a LiPo. Now I'm using a 10 amp fuse uh, because um, if you count it up here, I've got three one amp fuses. My USB aux though has two three amp ports. So that's a total of nine amps. So a 10 amp fuse is uh, the appropriate one to use. And really the biggest fuse that we wanna use for this type of battery. I did call the manufacturer and talk to them a little bit about this application. Of course, I didn't mention airplanes. Um, <laughs> and um, they, uh, uh, they said, yeah, you go up to 10 amps. You're safe up to 10 amps uh, with this battery. So good. And uh, like I mentioned before, we've got the Key West um, regulator rectifier putting out a uh, constant 13.4 uh, volts uh, to keep that battery topped off. Uh, I've got my ground wire coming down there to the left. I've got my positive wire going up to the right. Um, I'll show you kind of what I've got going on here. Back here, well, I've kind of got an electric chair. <laughs> but not in a bad way. Um, here are my, um, uh, here's my ground terminal block and I've got all my positive drawn wires in there. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more with some more uh, cable ties. Um, and these will get um, cable tied back across here when I replace the primer line, uh, which uh, replacing all the fuel lines is the next, the next thing. And then over here, I've got my positive bus uh, terminal block. Um, I've got my B-Lite uh, fuel sender box and uh, here's the plug for that and it will go right into the tank right here. I'll show you that in a future video. And we'll go back around to the front of the airplane. And here I've got my uh, positive lead coming out here to my switches. And there they are. So actually, I'm gonna walk around to the other side and we're gonna have a momentous occasion, hopefully with no smoke coming out of anything. I'm gonna power this puppy up and we'll see what happens. And look at that. We have um, an MGL that's running. We have a fuel gauge that is on. Uh, the MGL is even uh, telling me almost the correct uh, altitude. We're actually at 777 feet, I think, here, according to um, GPS. And there we go. We have power and no smoke coming out of anything and I am a happy happy camper we're gonna go ahead and turn that stuff off and there we are so successful day uh, came here straight from work we're actually having a nice warm spell it's getting into the 60s this week so this is a great opportunity to finish everything up uh, feeling like I'm really on the home stretch now so uh, we'll uh, talk to you again soon I'm gonna go home and eat dinner uh, on this uh, day after election day, still don't know what happened. Um, probably by the time you see this video, 
we'll know uh, what happened, but I don't want to talk about any of that stuff. Uh, just want to talk about airplanes. So thanks for hawking it with Mark. All right, it's another night. I'm cold and tired in the hangar, but uh, I wanted to show you that LED light uh, in the B light fuel gauge was incredibly bright. Uh, it is optional to put a potentiometer in, I would say required. Uh, holy cow, is it bright. So um, I did go ahead and install a potentiometer. And um, unfortunately, I wired up the wires correctly color-wise, but clockwise is dim. Anyway, I'm going to have it dim pretty much all the time, and that's much better. And we'll see, maybe I'll have to turn it up a little bit in daylight, but for now, that'll be okay. Also, I got my aux plug in, and I wanted to show that to you here. Uh, this one's got a little voltage meter in it, which I really like and two USB ports. So um, really nice, I've got it mounted here. Uh, you can see I've got a tie wrap and old fuel, a section of fuel hose standoff. Just to give a little extra rigidity, I've got my fuse holder right there. So there we are, electrical is done, moving on.